Hello and welcome everyone, Gage here from Sharp. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's a pleasure to have you with me as always. As you can see, we got a little bit of a chip in this guy here, so um, we're not gonna waste any time here today. We're gonna get right into it. And as you can probably see here, I am just going to uh, remove this chip by sharpening this knife like I would any other knife. Uh, we're just gonna remove way more material than we normally would. So I'm uh, working the entirety of the blade as evenly as possible using my 220 grit Naniwa traditional whetstone, um, very coarse. Um, you know, this, this ship is pretty bad, but not bad enough that I felt it necessary to go down to a 140. Okay, so that's just after a couple, you know, one to two minutes on the stones there. So we've already got quite a bit of material removed. So hopefully this doesn't take too long. I'm applying quite a bit of pressure because we're trying to remove quite a bit of steel here, right? So I'm uh, going at it pretty good. Checking my work often, making sure that my uh, edge looks nice and consistent the whole way. And I can see already at the heel a little bit, it's getting, uh, looks a little different down there. So I gotta change up my stroke a little bit. But coming along nicely so far. Just working the whole blade as evenly as possible. Sharpening it like I normally would, just obviously removing way more material than I normally would. And the burrs formed on the backside, so do a little bit more work on this front side here and then I'm gonna flip over and start using the other side. One thing to really keep in mind when you're doing big repairs like this is the condition of your stone. You're definitely gonna to have to flatten in the middle of this process and if you don't, your stone's gonna get up, get uh, real screwed up. So make sure you're taking a break every once in a while, flattening out your stone. I'm gonna do that. Uh, when I flip over to do the other side here in uh, two seconds. I like to try to work in different parts of the stone as well, just to wear it down as evenly as possible. Okay, so my edge looks nice. It's getting a little thick down at the heel here, but I think I just worked down there a little bit more than I have up at the tip here. If you can see that in the camera, a little bit thicker there, and gets a little skinnier at the tip. So, real quick before I flip over, I'll just do some more work up top. Good now. Burr's form, so I'm gonna flip over, knock this burr off, do some work on the other side. Uh, but like I said before I do that, a little bit of work on the stones. Make sure you round off your edges. All right, and away we go. On the back side here now. Same hand pressure, same angle. I want to make sure I'm take, taking a look at my edge once in a while here, make sure I'm being consistent. But we're just removing material from this side now. Working the blade evenly all the way from the tip down to the heel. You'll find that these low grit stones get pretty sandy too. Um, I've noticed that with 
the Suhiro stones as well as these Naniwa stones. It just seems, seems to be the way that these low grit stones are. And is probably why they remove material so quickly. But you do have to make sure you're maintaining our stones nicely and uh, just kind of replenishing them with water as we see fit. And my edge on the back side looks nice also. Coming along. This will really uh, give you a workout too, so. If you need an excuse to skip the gym, just repair a knife. There are obviously easier and faster ways to do this if you have like a belt sander or a, or a uh, sharpening wheel. This will probably happen a little quicker for you, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys that it's possible on wet stones. So if you're at home and this happens to your knife, you know you can fix it on your own. And I like to obviously check my work as often as I can because I'm applying a pretty good amount of pressure here. So things are gonna happen pretty quickly. And if I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing, things can get out of hand and I can sort of make small issues if caught early into big issues. So I just like to check early and often, make little adjustments here and there. And my edge is almost about the same size as it is on this side now. You'll notice that the edge on the front first side that you worked on will get smaller as this side gets larger because we're, that burr is knocking steel off of this side, making this edge look smaller. So just keep that in mind. You kind of have to work them back and forth until you get uh, a, uh, a um, beveling that you're happy with. I'll probably do this one around 50-50 or like 60-40 to the right, um, but not much. So I'm ready to flip over now. I got a burr formed nicely. You can see now that the chip is pretty small now. I would say a little bit more work on the uh, first side we started on and then flip back over and do this back side and it'll probably be pretty much gone by then. I like to flip my stone around once in a while too, just to try to keep things as even as possible. Obviously this can get a little bit repetitive in what I'm saying to you guys, because it is just literally doing the same thing until the edge is totally gone. I'm just, you know, checking my work. Or, sorry, the chip is totally gone. Just checking my work once in a while and getting rid of steel where it needs to come off. Myself, I have a bit of a habit of taking a little bit or being a little bit flat to the stone at the heel or taking a little bit too much off down at the heel here. So I just try to be wary of that and make sure I'm being careful not to take too much off the heel and make sure that I'm working the tip evenly. And 
think I'm doing a pretty good job so far. Chip's almost gone. Edge looks pretty darn even right now. I'm gonna keep working this side just a little bit more. Yep, getting real close there, almost gone. As you can see. Okay, I'm gonna flip over. I don't really have any set rules as to when I'm flipping from one side to the other. I kind of just go with my gut. But generally you want to try to work both sides of the blade pretty evenly the whole time. And I, don't, I wouldn't flip over before I had a burr formed, so I guess that's the good rule of thumb is kind of make sure you form that burr like you normally would. And make sure you get it nice and even before you flip over and start working the other side. Oh, and we're so close right now. That last little bit always seems to take the longest. Probably just because you're tired and over sharpening by the time you get it close. As you can see, we are super duper 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 close. It's hard to see in the camera that it's still there, but yeah, there you go. You can see just the little tiniest little chip still there. So I'm gonna keep working at it. I'm pretty excited though. We're almost done. Chip removal at least. And this is obviously when it becomes really important to make sure you're using the whole stone, like I said, make sure you're wearing your stone down as evenly as possible. And now that I'm getting close to, to having the chip removed, I wanna make sure I'm thinking about those sharpening principles now. So, um, the chip is now gone. I don't see it anywhere. So now I wanna make sure that I'm remembering my my steps of sharpening, which are to form the burr on this front side now. So now that the chip's gone, I just want to think about this as a run-of-the-mill sharpening. So forming the burr on this side. And because you've already done so much work, this, this sharpening now should take like no time at all. Yeah, so burr feels nice all the way from tip to heel. Check my edge. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna do a little work down here. That looks better. 
This is a Nishida sawn uh, knife. So this is handmade and sometimes they're a little wonky so you might have to uh, just, you know, change your angles a little bit to get the edge looking consistent. But yeah, that looks good. I'm happy with that. Edge looks nice now. A little bit here. Okay, now I'm happy. So now I'm gonna flip over to the other side. Burr feels nice on this back side now. I'm just gonna do a couple nice long strokes, even everything out. So, burr formed on the front side, flipped over, burr formed on the back side. Now we're going to D burr. Putting these nice long strokes in, flipping sides every time. And my hand pressure getting lighter and lighter and lighter. Feel no burr on either side. Knife feels pretty sharp already, so that's a good sign. Time to move on to the 1000 grit stone. So that was a uh, Nanny 220. Now we're moving on to the Suhiro Serax 1000. and uh, following the same steps on this stone as it did on the last stone. So forming the burr on this front side here. Angle has not changed at all. My hand pressure is getting lighter and lighter every stone we use. And when I was removing material, I was pressing very hard. And now that um, I'm sharpening and trying to refine my edge, I'm lightening up as we go through my progression here. And you can probably see all this, these black streaks forming in my stone. So that's all that loose steel that we formed off that 220 grit stone coming off of the knife and now sort of embedding itself in the stone. So in a second here, I'm going to take a break from sharpening and just clear all the steel out of my stone. If you've ever felt like your stone just isn't working, this may be the cause of that. It's getting all plugged up. And you can see I was getting a little, my stone's not totally flat right now either, so. And there we go. I'm using a uh, diamond plate by Toma, but you could use a dressing stone and a girl stone if you wanted to. And if you weren't able to form the burr before, I think, and you've you know, been doing a lot of work, I think you'll find that once you clear your stone out from all the steel, you'll put a few strokes in and, and the burr will form immediately for you. You really have to take care of your stones to get the most out of them. Well, they're, we're looking real good right now. Yeah. 
Yep. Edge is looking real nice, super consistent. Took the heel, looks real good. Got my burr formed, so um, again, I'm just gonna clear my stone out real quick. Just a quick little scrub. So obviously just working this, this back side like I did the front side as evenly as I can from tip to heel. Trying to keep in mind how much work I did on that front side so I can match it on the back side. Obviously the, the edge is going to tell me if I've done a good job in that regard as well. Just taking a look at this, the size of it. Want to make sure I form that burr, obviously, too. All right, we're looking good. Burr feels nice. Just a little bit of extra work in this part here. Yeah. So. I'm gonna move on to my deburring now. My edge on the back side looks really nice. Nice and consistent. This side looks great too. So we're getting places. Now for these deburring strokes, I'm getting very, very light on my hand pressure towards the end here. And our knife is feeling really, really sharp. So, final stone. Our Suhiro Vika 5000. Just gonna polish up our blade finally on this guy. Being very gentle with my hand pressure now. Sort of just applying enough pressure to make sure the knife and stone are making contact the way I want it to, but uh, wouldn't say I'm really applying too much pressure. Obviously as we sharpen through our progression we're trying to refine the edge so less pressure, hand pressure is going to help us with that as does the finer grit. And obviously nothing's changed from any of the other stones I've used. I just Work the blade as evenly as possible, tip to heel. Now I'm not checking my work as often, obviously, because I'm pretty confident in, in uh, the sort of feel I have with this knife, so. And obviously, as I say that, I notice it'll be a little consistent down at the heel here, so I'll fix that up. Now 
Okay, and there you go. You get really, really nice polish with these uh, 5,000 grit stones from Suhiro from the Rika line. They are really, really nice. And they come with the stand included, a little Nagura stone. Pretty reasonably, pretty, very reasonably priced as well for the quality of the stone. So we are just about there, guys. Just gonna do some work on the backside here and then we'll be all done. And the backside, then deburr, and then we'll hit the strop. So where are we at right now? 26, almost 27 minutes now, so that wasn't so bad. Half an hour to get a chip that size out, I think is pretty good. Obviously, I don't know if, uh, you know, half an hour sharpening might be tough. I know when I first started out, half an hour or an hour sharpening was tough. Now my stamina is a little bit better. And I'm sharpening knives all day, so half an hour feels pretty quick. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. I just find if you can get yourself sort of in the zone, sort of like running long distance, if the, the more you think about how long it's taking, the, the longer it feels like it's taking. So just try to enjoy the, the process, I guess. It's a nice morning here at the shop. That's some coffee, a beautiful day outside. Half an hour worth of sharpening doesn't feel so bad. And uh, our burr feels good on this backside now. I'm gonna deburr. Okay guys, there we go. Chips out, sharpened up. Edge looks real nice. Yeah, I'm real happy. Knife is super sharp too. These are made from white steel, so I, I find that white steel is uh, one of the easiest, if not the easiest steels to sharpen out there. So I'm just a few strokes on the strop here. Oh yeah, that's real sharp. And of course our sharpness test here. Test all the way from the tip down to the heel. But yeah, that's uh, real sharp. So, here you go guys. Thanks so much for watching. I know this was a long video, so I'm assuming most of you didn't make it this far. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to my channel for more knife and sharpening related content. Um, and until the next video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a pleasant day.